All right, now that we have looked at resistors, capacitors, and inductors, all in their own separate video, it kind of helps to do an overview or recap video and look at them side by side all in one video so we can talk about the similarities and differences. So first, let's talk about the units and variables used for each one. So a resistor has a resistance, abbreviated R, measured in ohms, abbreviated with the capital Greek letter omega. Capacitor has a capacitance C, measured in farads, abbreviated F, and an inductor has an inductance L, measured in Henry's abbreviated H. So here we have component and their variable unit plus the abbreviations. Each one of these things has an equation that mathematically describes its behavior. So for a resistor, we have Ohm's law, V equals IR. For a capacitor, we have a differential equation, I current equals C, the capacitance times dV dt, the derivative of the voltage, and for the inductor, we sort of have the inverse of that, V, the voltage, equals L, the inductance, times DI, DT, the derivative of the current. For each of those equations, we can also write it, or actually, sorry, for two of those three equations, we can, oops, as I accidentally exit presentation mode there, because my tablet doesn't like it when I write too close to the top of the screen, we can write that equation in integral form, so that's going to be Na for Ohm's law. For the capacitor, we can write it as a voltage as a function of time equals 1 over C integral T naught to T I of T prime dt, dt prime plus V naught. And similarly, for the inductor, we get I of T equals 1 over L integral from T naught to T V of T prime DT plus I naught. We also have a continuity rule for each of these, or again, sorry, for two out of three of these, not really applicable for the resistor. For the capacitor, we have a rule that voltage must be continuous. And this comes from, if you watched the previous video explaining this, this equation where an instantaneous change in voltage would mean an infinite derivative here, which would require infinite current, which would therefore require infinite power. So that's why your voltage has to be continuous. And then similarly for the inductor, the current must be continuous for similar reasons. If we look at this equation, if there is a instantaneous change in current that makes this derivative infinite, which requires infinite voltage, which requires infinite power, which you can't do. So the current through an inductor must be continuous. We also have a steady state rule here, which again is Na for the resistor because we don't have a differential equation describing its behavior. But for the capacitor, we have that in the steady state, the current goes to zero. So it behaves like an open circuit. We get that again from looking at this equation. Steady state means all the derivatives are zero, nothing is changing. So if dv dt is zero, then i must be zero. And for the inductor in steady state, we have the voltage must be zero. So an inductor in steady state acts like a short circuit. Again, that comes from the equation. In steady state, if all the derivatives are zero, di dt equals zero. Therefore, the voltage drop across the inductor is zero. We can also have mechanical analogies for each of these parts. And this is particularly helpful if you are a mechanical engineer who has taken a system dynamics class and dealt with spring mass dampers. So each of these parts is directly analogous to a part in a spring mass damper system mathematically. And when you're analyzing the behavior of an RC circuit, an RL circuit, or an RLC circuit, 
it kind of helps to have develop an intuitive understanding and think about it like a spring mass damper. So in that case, the capacitor is like your spring. The inductor is like your mass. So you can think of these as two different ways of storing energy. And the resistor is like your damper or friction, which is dissipating energy. And you can sort of see how this comes out in the equations if I'm gonna to switch to a different color here. So this equation for this inductor, V equals LDI dt, if you think of velocity like force and inductance, or sorry, current as velocity, then the derivative of current of velocity is acceleration. So this looks an awful lot like F equals ma, again, where the inductance is analogous to mass for where again we have the equation f equals ma for a spring you might remember hooke's law f equals k x which isn't quite what we have here where we have current not velocity there's not force over on the left hand side but here we have voltage which we've said is analogous to force so if we write f equals k and then we have i representing velocity but the integral of velocity is position so this is analogous to hooke's law where the spring constant k is kind of like the inverse of the capacitance. So a bigger capacitance means a lower equivalent of a spring constant. So I think it's a little more intuitive to think of the inductor as a mass. Maybe this inverse capacitance thing here gets a little confusing. But again, just think of a capacitor like a spring that can store potential energy. It's just storing electrical energy instead of elastic mechanical energy. And then finally, with a damper, for a linear damper, so we're not doing um, air resistance with a quadratic relationship or anything, then that is just going to be usually your damping constant B, sometimes called a lowercase c, times x dot or times V, whatever you want to use to rep represent velocity. And we can see that over here, again, if you're thinking of voltage as force, current as velocity, so there's your x dot, and then resistance is like your damping constant B. So Again, if when analyzing RL, RC, or RLC circuits, the behavior of voltage and current in such a system is not totally intuitive to you, it's usually a little more intuitive to think of a spring mass damper and how force, position, velocity, and acceleration behave, and those analogies can be very helpful when analyzing these circuits, which we will do a few more examples of in the next couple videos.